Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants for this course wherever you are in this part of the globe and whatever time you are watching this uh, video. Uh, you know this is the course in investment analysis and portfolio management under the SWAM lecture series and my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So, as you are aware this is a 30 lecture series in investment analysis and each being for 1 hour. So, in the 17th lecture which was held, so you were discussing about utility theories, the last part of utility theories and there uh, when we wrapped up that uh, 17th lecture we were discussing about safety first principle. That means, your main aim for investment is you want to be safe, reduce your risk but at the same time earn a return or an average return. So, there are different ways how you can do that mathematically. So, one would be basically the concept of trying to maximize and another would basically be trying to minimize if you remember that. So, we will go into the details uh, for that. So, as you know this is the 18th lecture and the title is investment analysis and portfolio management under the SWAM lecture series. And this is a continuation of utility theory, the last part which we will be discussing about the concepts. Now, as we are uh, discussing safety one's principle, we will also go into some simple statistical ideas which are very helpful to understand that how the safety first principle can be very simply understood considering the simple bounds which you have in statistics, in basic statistics. So, one being Markov inequality, Chebyshev's inequality. So, I will just pay attention to the to Chebyshev's inequality and how considering the concept of safety first principle, you can draw a one to one correspondence between this inequality which is the Chebyshev's inequality. Now, our first set of discussions obviously will be more related to normal distribution, normal distribution of returns for the asset or returns of the portfolio. Portfolio means uh, the idea where you formulate the portfolio consisting of capital N number of, of stocks or assets and we consider them to be the stocks where the return and if you remember we had discussed about small r and capital R total return and rate of return and we will consider small r which is the rate of return to have a normal distribution. So, if you also remember I did mention that the concept of utility function when it is quadratic has a one to one correspondence with uh, the distribution of the returns to be normal. So, if it is utility function is uh, quadratic then based on utility being quadratic you will have a return and that return distribution will be normal and obviously, it is a other way implication also that means, if the returns are normally distributed then you can say that the utility based on which you are making that investment is uh, quadratic. So, obviously, uh, I would like to mention few thing important things here obviously, that is just an add ons which would definitely kindle or rekindle your interest in, in um, finance in a much better way. So, uh, during the discussion of this course, I did mention that there would be a, a second part of this course under the SWAM series which would be more related to risk analysis for uh, investment. So, in there we will consider non-normal distributions, but the overall emphasis for this part, uh, let us consider this part 1 which is the investment analysis would be more on normal distribution. So, having said that, let us continue what is uh, written in slide number 5. So, if returns are normally distributed, uh, then the optimum portfolio which you are going to formulate would be one where capital RL. So, this capital RL which I am writing is 
can also be replaced by small r, r l. So, small r n is the returns. So, the, the when we are talking about about the uh, the distribution is basically the dis distribution I should use a different color in order to make it more prominent. So, this we are talking about the distribution of r l whether the distribution of the small r l uh, I would not use the suffix l sorry my mistake or capital R which we consider which is the return for any stock would have a di normal distribution which is basically mentioned here. Now, what is uh, small r l or capital R l I am going to come to that within few minutes. So, whenever you are you are investing your main aim as an investor is either to max definitely you want to maximize your return, but at the same time you want to minimize your risk. But human being nature being more uh, uh, in line with trying to uh, make a point that you want to basically reduce your risk and deduction of risk is of prime importance to you rather than thinking of what is the return because pe people are generally risk averse. So, this R L which we will replace by R f and what is R f I am going to come to that later. So, this R l is basically a particular level of risk uh, or level of return uh, which you want your uh, portfolio at, at least to have that or more than that. So, so here you want, um, want where capital R l or small r l would be the maximum number of standard deviations away from the mean. So, mean is basically I am I mentioned is basically about the uh, mean of the portfolio. So, let us consider an example. So, if you remember they were basically two concepts of safety funds principle. So, we will consider the, the minimum one, one was the maximum one, one was the minimum one. So, uh, let us consider the maximum minimum one here. So, 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 let us draw the this, uh, this uh, normal distribution, I will use the axis as uh, with black color and uh, you have considered this is the mean value, mean value of the portfolio return which you want and this is the distribution which you have, this is a normal one remember. So, this I will mention mention as small r p, p being for the portfolio and I will continue using either small r or capital R without much confusion. So, obviously, I should stick to small r because I have been mentioning the return distribution, but even if I mention capital R do not be confused it is still any one of them can use it safely and obviously, if you are using small r for the portfolio the corresponding value of with the suffix where the l is would be small r suffix l or or capital R suffix l as the case is. Now, here he says then the portfolio optimum portfolio would be one where capital R was the was the maximum number of standard deviations away from the mean. So, let us consider the example minimization of the probability of r p being less than r l. So, this is basically I am going to use small r. So, this is the distribution of the return of the portfolio and when I am saying the mean I will use the bar which is the, the average value. In general if I use the population uh, symbol it will be expected value of R p. So, I will be using a bar considering that you have taken small small, small um, sample set. So, I am trying to basically find out that how that R p value is less than R l. So, I will draw R l with a different color let it be say for example, blue dark blue. So, this is basically the R l value. Now, what we want is that I want to minimize the probability of R p being less than R l. So, what I want is basically this. I use the highlighter to mark that area, let me use the small uh, light green color. So, I want the area on to the left, this one which I mark as minimal as possible. That means, for the random variable R p, 
being on to the left of that obviously that would basically have a probability I want to minimize that that means I want on an average the return of the portfolio to be greater than that standard fixed value which is RL. Now more the area is on to the right is better for me because I will have a, a, a return which is always greater than that fixed value of RL or maybe that is basically some market fixed value such that I would always be on the positive side. So, rather than trying to minimize I could also have analyzed it like maximizing the probability onto the right hand side. So, this I am trying to draw in blue. So, obviously, the total area is 1 as we know it is the normal or for any distribution curve the overall area this is the PDF similarly if it is a discrete one it is a PMF. So, this blue area is 1 minus that. So, I want to basically maximize the blue area or minimize that and when I use the green one is basically this concept which I am trying to utilize this one minimize probability of RP less than RL. So, remember we consider the returns are normal distributed which I mentioned and the suffix P which I have already said denotes the portfolio and RL means a fixed level of return. So, which is 5 percent. Now, what can be RL? So, say for example, I consider the bank interest rate or the risk free interest rate. So, in that case I want my portfolio return on an average or the probability of RP being less than that risk free interest rate as low as possible. So, in that case the value of RL would basically be RF which is the risk free interest rate and we have discussed the risk free interest rate earlier. So, if I consider that, so consider I have RP values for 3 different cases as 10, one is 4, second case is 14 and the third case is 17 and the standard deviation or the square root of the variances are given by 5. 4 and 8 for these cases. So, if you want to find out the difference from 5 percent which is the value. So, obviously, um, uh, it will be technically I am trying want to minimize the area onto the left. So, that would be 1 minus 1 because it is onto the left. So, if you are looking at the normal distribution from your side it will be on the left. So, it is minus sigma a because sigma is basically I denote as the standard deviation of the portfolio a. For the case when the return is 14 and the standard deviation is 4, it is minus 2 and 1 fourth onto the left multiplied by sigma b which is the standard deviation of b and in case if it is 17 and 8 which is the return and the standard deviation for the portfolio c, it is minus or 1.5 sigma suffix c onto the left. So, what I mean actually is if I draw the normal distribution. So, I am using the red one to denote the portfolio A. So, this RP is basically 10 and this RF is uh, basically 5. So, this is the mean value. So, I uh, the value of, of this RL um, this the value of it considering the sigma is is uh, 5. So, it is basically one standard deviation on to the left. So, this is what it means in case if it is basically 14 and 4. So, this would be a value of 2.25 of sigma b. So, this distance onto the left and finally, for the case when we have the C portfolio, the value on to the left is 1.5 times the standard deviation of C. Now, whatever I have written is very simply understood if you consider the, the standard normal deviate because considering A, B, C are random variables corresponding to the portfolio you can convert that into the standard normal deviate and then corresponding to that you can find out the probability which has been mentioned. Uh, you can find out the probability of RP being less than L 
RL and we will want to try to minimize that. I will draw the diagram uh, in few minutes in on our next slide and explain it in more details. So, this is what is um, I have tried to um, delineate it in more details considering there are two portfolios A and B and they are shown in uh, green and blue color. So, um, the variances are different for the portfolios A and B and similarly the standard deviations are also different. And RL is a value on to the left. So, what we actually as an investor you want are in you want to intend is just for your your information this is not that important, but I will just highlight. So, this value which is written here 2 sigma a basically is the standard deviation plus minus 2 sigma. So, the overall area if you check into the standard normal table it will be about 68 percent approx I am not going to the details. And if I check uh, the this 2 sigma b for the portfolio b again this plus minus 2 sigma would also be the same area of uh, of 67 uh, 68 percent. So, obviously, you may be thinking the area these uh, look different. So, considering that I have been able to draw it uh, quite legibly and, and to scale. So, that would depend on what is the overall area coverage which you try to find out using the standard normal table. So, if I mark it my mistake if I mark it using the green one for portfolio A. So, what we intend to do I want to minimize. So, I am not writing the word minimization. So, it is probability of I will use capital R it as, as, as the norm is R L is less than R L R P is less than R L. So, which would mean considering is the standard normal concept can be used it will be R p minus R p bar which is the average value which is here which is R a. So, let me use a here to to make it more. So, so this is R a, this is R a, R a bar divided by sigma a. So, I am trying to convert into a standard normal deviate. So, this is R l minus R bar a divided by sigma a. So, if I use the standard normal concept, it becomes capital Z less than equal to small z and that you have the table. So, you will try to basically find out say for example, alpha suffix a some value you find it out. So, as we are discussing that you have uh, probability of that portfolio which is a has to be the random variable has to be less than R l and if you remember I did mention R l being the risk free interest rate. So, as the equation is written. So, I convert into a standard normal which is probability of R a minus R bar a which is the expected value of the, the return of the portfolio which is this point which I am again marking. So, this is technically the expected value divided by standard deviation which is sigma a less than equal to R l minus R bar a divided by sigma a which is standard deviation that is equal to if you know the concept of standard normal deviate is is equal to say for example, alpha a. Alpha is basically you find it from the standard normal table. Now, when I come to the portfolio b, I apply the same concept. So, this is r b, r being being the random return for the portfolio b less than equal to. So, I can use this R L which means probability of R B minus R B bar, R B bar again is this which is equal to expected value of the portfolio R B return B 
that divided by sigma v which is standard deviation less than equal to R L minus R bar B divided by sigma B. So, that will say for example, is sig alpha suffix B. So, this is would basically be for the portfolio B. So, what I do is that I find out the minimum between alpha A and alpha B. So, I will just highlight it. So, I choose whether this one is less or this one is less. Now, diagrammatically if you look what we are aiming is this, I will use the colors green to highlight the left portion for the portfolio A and color blue for the left portion of the portfolio uh, B. Left means when I am looking at the diagram which is there on the screen. So, if I have, so I will use, so this area of the green one means this, it will go till infinity. So, this whole area and if I use the blue one, so let me first erase it. When I use the blue one, the light blue one, so this will be this small area here. So, I will choose the one where the left portion is minimum because I want to minimize, I want the portfolio return to be greater than this. So, this is basically the essence based on the fact that I want to minimize the return of the portfolio being less than or equal to R L. Now, if it is a non-normal distribution, the idea would remain the same, but rather than using the standard normal table, you have to use some simulation or other optimization technique or other statistical techniques to find it out. So, in order to determine how many standard deviations R L lies below the mean, mean is the basically the central value, we calculate R L minus the mean which return divided by the standard deviation exactly what I said. So, rather than on the left portion I want to find out because the overall area if you if you look at the normal distribution is symmetric with, with respect to the mean. So, 0.5 is on to the left, 0.5 is on to the right over the, of the overall area of 1 or the probability of 1 whatever you say. So, if I draw the distribution, so consider I am using the black color, this is the, so R L if it is more on to the left, so you try to push think rather than thinking that the overall a probability is less, I, if I push R L more on to the left. So, consider R L is here, if I try pushing it more onto the left, so obviously the overall area start decreasing. So, that is our intention is. So, rather than decreasing the risk free return, we can think trying to push the overall distribution onto the right, that means keep R L fixed and push, push it onto the right, that means try to combine your portfolio with such assets such that the average value increases and the overall distribution shifts onto the right. So, hence that area onto the left which is probability of R, R p minus R l uh, in less than equal to R l is as low as possible. So, when I am saying minimum is this area, I am trying to bring the same fact time and again, plus please bear with me. So, in order to determine how many standard deviations R l lies below the mean, we calculate R l minus the mean standard return divided by standard deviation. Thus, we want to minimize. So, minimize is we minimize R L minus R P bar which is this area we want to find it out. So, that minimization is also equal to maximization. So, if this overall area as I said I am again repeating it, this overall area is 0 0.5. So, if I and if I have this you want to minimize you there take uh, the R L value more to the left. So, minimization is basically equal to maximization with the minus sign. So, it is maximization R P minus R L uh, divided by sigma P. That means, I want to find out how many cent standard deviation um, the average value of the portfolio is over and above R L value. 
So, this if you consider and if I mentioned few minutes back, so rather than using R L, uh, we use the risk free interest rate which is R suffix F. So, they would basically convey the same thing, I want to maximize the overall area which is R P bar minus R F. So, I am trying to maximize this overall area or I can also say same thing, I want to maximize this area, I am drawing to draw it in the hashed blue color because the reason being which is very simple to understand. So, if this area which you want to ma minimize if I denote by alpha, so the obviously the area onto the right would be 1 minus alpha. So, maximizing 1 minus alpha would also mean depending alpha can be changed is also akin to minimizing alpha. Even though for example, we have simplified assumption by considering the normal distribution which I did mention that we yes uh, we agree that we are taking the normal distribution, but normal distribution need not be true always, but this would hold true for any distribution having the first and the second moments. Why first and second moment? Because it has something to do with the mean which is coming from the first moment and the variance which is coming from the second moment. There are other problems also you can formulate using the third moments which is related to the skewness or curtises which is the fourth moment so on and so forth. So, problems can be structured accordingly depending on the on how sophisticated models you want to build, but uh, for trying to analyze the models in the very simplest sense to, uh, to, un, to make it other people understand taking the mean and the variance is more than enough that is basically the information can be passed on or how you make another other person understand that what is the best combination of the portfolio is very uh, well explained considering the mean and the variance of the portfolio. So, according to Shevichev's uh, inequality uh, whether in many of the books it is written with the spelling C or T, so I am using um, or T, so I am using both the spelling. For according to Shevichia's inequality for any random variable x, I am taking and considering expected value exists which is the first moment exists, variance exists which is the second mo moment exists. Then we know that the that the mod of the difference between the random variable and its expected value divided by the uh, standard deviation of the square root of variance, if it is greater than some value t uh, a quantity. So, that is always bounded less than equal to 1 by t square, it can be proved. So, in case we replace the values accordingly, what we do is like this, we replace this variance with the standard uh, square root of the variance with the standard deviation of the portfolio. This expected value is basically r bar p or expected value of the portfolio. So, hence x is basically the random variable r p. So, if we replace that which is equivalent to consider there is a value k which is a bound 1 by k square is the, the value of the bound. So, uh, as we are interested in the lower limit hence we simply simply use it. Uh, and simplify it like this. So, this is the equation and there rather than k we use this value which which we have already utilized that is R L minus R P, so R P bar is greater than and divided by sigma p. So, in that case the bound based on which the probability should always be less than that is given by sigma square p by divided by R L minus R P whole square and there, there you know the standard deviation, the R L which is basically R F and R P is basically the average value you can find out the bound and that will give you a lot of, of information about what would be the overall bound such that you know that you limit your, your uh, probability within that bound and can decide on the amount of investment and decide on the assets or the stocks. The right side of the inequality is exactly equal to the decision process under number 1 
under the first safety first principle. So, we have considered previously if you see um, uh, the, the last um, 17th lecture slides. So, if you replace that, so this becomes, so here I have utilized again the same concept probability R p minus R p bar divided by sigma p. So, this is basically capital Z and this is small z standard deviate, standard deviate. So, this is the bound based on which you can find out your combination of the portfolio. The second criteria is basically maximizing R L. So, once I have explained in detail the first one these things would be quite relevant. So, you want to maximize the R L or R F value even though R, the risk free interest rate cannot be changed, but I will use to utilize here R L or some sort of lower limit of the return subject to the probability of R p being less than equal to R L. So, you are trying to minim minimize keep the level of the return of the portfolio less than R L and try to basically shift R L that means, you are trying to push R L on to the right slowly, but at the same time try to basically keep the overall area on to the left of R L which means technically as R L keeps shifting the overall distribution also moves on to the right. So, R L is being shifted on to the right from if I am looking at my from my perspective and the overall distribution also starts moving which means if I draw it. So, the first is this and uh, R L is here now R L starts shifting on to the right. As it moves what happens is that the overall distribution keeping the same also starts shifting. So, if I take it, so this also starts shifting. So, uh, this value of R L is should slowly changing which means that we are trying to ensure maximize R L value that means, I am I want more and more, but at the same time I want to minimize my overall area onto the left which means so called losses. So, we can have set any value of alpha depending on alpha which is alpha is this one value we can basically optimize it and this can be done. So, this is the, the way I have drawn it the exactly. So, this is alpha is 0 0.05. So, as z z means in the standard normal deviate table. So, technically this is R L as it moves the overall distribution which you have also changes. So, this moves keeps moving on to the right that means you are trying to formulate the portfolio in such a way that the average value of the portfolio return changes. So, it goes right, right, right. So, this moving and R L is also shifting. So, this implies that considering uh, that value of alpha, you can basically formulate it uh, using standard normal deviate what we have because that is probability of either z is less than equal to small z or probability z is greater than equal to small z. So, if this is alpha this is 1 minus alpha we all know that. So, in this case if when you formulate it from the on the distribution values. So, what you have is this. So, technically you had R p. So, this is this was R l minus R p by sigma p this part and that was equal to basically alpha. So, exactly at that value. So, if you in that case you will basically have so, I will I'll consider equality here for the time being. So, R p is equal to R l plus sigma p into alpha. So, this is exactly what is basically denoted here. So, obviously, if it is greater, so this greater than sign comes that means, some R l value plus a standard deviation depending on the probabilities which you have. So, change, keep changing change the fixed rate of returns and you will have different values and, and that can be denoted like this. So, this is the efficient frontier we have drawn and this R L if you remember the risk free interest rate, but just to draw a simile. So, this I am drawing parallel and at one point it is a tangent and leaves it this area. So, I am and, and, and that value is basically 
the and this probabilities are same. So, at that value is basically the, the best combination you can have. So, so, here there are obviously two portfolios, two portfolios, but at that point when it leaves, that is the best optimum portfolio you can have. The another kind criteria is basically maximize the return RP such that and obviously you want RP being less than equal to RL is equal to alpha. So, here rather than shifting RL, I am shifting the overall center of average value of the distribution by itself. So, I am shifting it, so keeping R L fixed at a certain value. So, it keeps moving and, and such that you are able to basically utilize it accordingly. So, what you are aiming is this. Here, this is basically R L. So, consider that in the first case, I will use the color C for example, black. So, I have probability of R P minus less than equal to R L. This is alpha. So, this is probability. I will write one of them and basically extend it accordingly. R P bar by sigma P less than equal to R L minus R P bar by sigma P, this is equal to alpha and this is alpha being. So, this is the overall area. I am using the black color here because I have written the equation accordingly. So, this would be the value. So, once I have that, that is fixed. Now, what I do, I want to maximize R p bar. R p bar means basically the central value. So, I will use it is a little bit dark and bold it. So, this is the central value or the average value. So, I shift it on to the right. So, consider that overall distribution changes and I use another color. So, I am, I am combining them in such a way that the overall average value changes, but the combination of the would definitely have different weights for the assets. So, consider this is the distribution. So, in that case, this is the average value. So, I am ensuring now this is the overall region on to the left. So, obviously, you would be thinking that if it is equality sign is there, then how is it possible? Then R L should also be shifting. Technically, this value should be less than equal to alpha. So, it is being met. It cannot basically cross alpha, this overall area. So, this is the case when I have basically the portfolio being formulated and mention it as B. This is the average value. Initially, when the case was this, this was A. Consider I extend it further. This is the average value, which is the case C. So, here this is the small area. So, I ensure that it cannot exceed alpha because more the area is on to the left is basically bad for my decision process. And here R L is fixed. In the first case, R L was being shifted on to the right. So, depending on that, your main aim is to basically formulate a portfolio or find out the weights of those assets such that the com combination would ensure the conditions which you have laid. So, first one was basically minimization of the probability of R P being less than equal to R L and based on that you formulate it and, and utilize the concept and obviously considering the standard normal deviate. Uh, that was uh, the case which we led also gave you an idea that how it has a one to one uh, um, correspondence with one of the inequalities, Chebyshev's equality and you can find out the bound. Bound that means your overall probability would not exceed that. In the second case, uh, we ensured that you want to maximize R L, push R L on to the right, but ensuring that the probability of R L R P minus less than equal to R L is, is less than equal to alpha. And there you saw 
the um, efficient frontier and you will try to basically push your your that that straight line if you remember that dependent on the value of alpha because that will have a tan um, and that tan out that straight line would depend on the value of alpha which you have if you remember i i, I wrote rp is equal to even though it, it is actually greater than depending on the less than equal to sign rp is is greater than rl plus sigma into alpha so alpha value would basically dictate that R, rp value is greater than on to the right hand side so that was basically the um, slanted line the green one and as it moves parallelly so it will cross the efficient frontier at, at the, the and be a tangent at one point that will ensure your maximum uh, value value in sense in in the sense that you are trying to optimize and reach the optimum value based on the criteria which you have set in this third case it's basically uh, keeping rl fixed rl is not changing you are only changing the value of rp trying to push it on to the right so here uh, just for your information even though all these calculations have been done so in the case when you have the blue one which is portfolio b i will basically you i will write it as this probability of rp minus rp bar so this is basically rp bar and uh, so divided by sigma p less than equal to rl minus rp bar divided by sigma p is for example alpha a similarly when i go to the portfolio b it will be i'm i'm writing it here so this probability of rp minus rp bar so this is rp bar less divided by sigma p less than equal to rl minus rp bar divided by sigma p again standard normal is equal to alpha b say for example and finally for the violet one probability r p minus r p bar the color scheme would make things clear to you sigma p less than equal to r l minus r p bar by sigma p is equal to alpha c so this is basically r p c or r p which is c for for the portfolio now what it would mean now in the initial case when r l could be changed we saw we had that graph i'll remove it i'll erase it but you have the graph this was the efficient frontier and the rl value depending on how it was it moved tangentially so the so it moved tangentially and these values which you had were rl and that dependent on this equation rp greater than equal to rl plus sigma p into alpha that was the case so it moved accordingly so here you had l1 which is rl1 l2 l3 corresponding it will go but now the overall picture now changes here what you have you are not fixing uh, you are not changing sorry my apology you are not changing rl you are keeping rl fixed and you are changing basically rp so rather than the moving parallelly now keeping rl fixed the overall line will move counter clockwise anti clockwise and the point where it leaves the uh, efficient frontier where it is tangent that would be the best combination so if i use the blue color so this is the third line it goes this is the fourth time and sick for example it is tangent here so this is the best value so it is moving anti clockwise because you are keeping rl fixed and trying to increase the return and if you see very very interestingly the values of the return of the portfolio average value is slowly shifting and is going up up the y axis and obviously the corresponding sigma p value would also change because as you are changing the weights the standard deviation of the portfolio also change and obviously the return will also change because we know 
from simple formula the return of the portfolio we have done it but still i am writing it is w i into r i bar and sigma p square is equal to double summation w i w j sigma i j i is equal to 1 j is equal to 1 to capital n capital n that is also equal to cap double summation i am uh, so in that case you have w i w j rho i j sigma i sigma j rho i j is the correlation coefficient so i is equal to 1 j is equal to 1 capital n capital n so you need to ensure that accordingly so these are the main three ideas of of safety first principle where uh, and and they have different combinations can be done where you can basically have uh, the the portfolio uh, formulated accordingly such that you can uh, consider this just one minute you can formulate your portfolio accordingly uh, with this uh, i will uh, close this 18th uh, lecture where it basically considered in some details about the safety first principle. There are different ways you can formulate the safety first principle and they can be formulated as a simple uh, portfolio optimization problem. So, if you remember the Markowitz model where you wanted to minimize the risk or maximize the return such, such the conditions were true. But here one interesting part is that if you see one in the last two uh, formulation or the constraint where you want to maximize um, push RL onto the right or push RP bar onto the right, there was a probabilistic constraint. So, obviously, if it is a normal distribution solving uh, these type of problems are, are relatively easy. If they are not, if they are not a uh, normal distribution, you, you have different ways of trying to solve them uh, like robust optimization, reliability based optimization. In one of the cases, you consider a priori the distribution being given from the data in another case you do not consider any distribution and formulate the problem accordingly. So, I uh, will end this 18th lecture and I uh, will and continue the discussions further if you have uh, seen the syllabus some more go into options and so on and so forth in, in the corresponding lectures 19th, 20th and so on and so forth. Have a nice day and thank you very much.